country's been down as far as helpers. And uh, I, this is to encourage teenagers as much as it is to encourage adults right. to be involved in the bus ministry. Uh, the bus ministry is a, a wonderful, wonderful ministry. And I want you to see through these three that uh, you're not just doing something that doesn't amount to anything. Uh, she's married to a pastor, church in Yakima. Uh, they run 250. Uh, Brother Antonio Venegas, her husband. <laughs> These are sisters. Uh, but they started out on the bus ministry when Amen. she was eight. Amen. She was four and, and he was three. And uh, so you can see your labor is vain. It's not labor is vain in the Lord. God is going to bless. And so when Ms. Pays, I'll just say, say this as a word of introduction. We just got to the doctor's office. He sit us down and says, sorry, Ms. Paisley, you got basically terminal cancer. Well, boy, that'll knock you flat. She's 62 years old. So when we went to the car after that, all the bad news we heard, I told her how much I loved her. And of course, I would be there at her side all the way through whatever's going on. And then I said, here's the second thing I said to her. This is right after she's heard that she's probably going to die. I said, aren't you glad you spent 31 years in the bus ministry? And she got a big smile on her face. And she said, I sure Amen. am. Amen. And they, I'll tell you what, she loved these kids. This, these, these right here, they, they can tell you. So, uh, Mary, I'm going to have you give a short five-minute testimony or so, and then we'll have Brenda come in. Morning. Uh, my name is Mary Medina. Um, thank you, Pastor Paisley and Church family, for the opportunity of letting me share a little bit of my um, childhood years testimony during my during my uh, route bus. A little bit nervous. Um, I started riding the bus at the age of eight. Every Sunday morning, there was a Mrs. There was Mrs. Paisley bus route number two. I loved seeing her with a smile would give us a hug and would always give us a good morning with hello Mary, Brenda, and David. We rode the bus for about three years until my dad felt the call for the Lord to start a mission in Mexico, borderline of Piedra Negras and Eagle Pass, Texas. My dad was in the ministry for three straight years until we faced the need financially to return to the state of Washington during the harvest season to work in agriculture from March to October, and then we returned back to Mexico. Every year when we returned to Pasco, I knew Mrs. Paisley would find us no matter where we lived in Pasco. Every year, I'd be full of joy and looking forward and riding Mrs. Paisley's bus. My favorite song was, Hey bus driver, speed up a little bit. <laughs> now I know the bus driver did not speed, but I sure felt he was driving faster and we would sing louder and louder. I love listening to her stories with her posters that she'd used for visual examples of the Bible. The memorization of the verse, bi verse Bible was a big help as I was growing. I tell my kids the wonderful experience I had riding the bus. I tell them so much of Mrs. Paisley. Now as an adult, I know that if we dedicate time and give love to the children, they will never forget you. Yeah. Yeah. I thank so much to God that he used Mrs. Paisley in my Christian life. Again, thank you Pastor Paisley and Church for, follow, for allowing Mrs. Paisley to be a good influence during my child life. I can go on and on and telling stories about crazy things Mrs. Paisley let us get away with during our bus round number two. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, let's have Brenda come up. And Brenda was four years old when she started riding the bus. Her husband's the senior pastor of the church, and and Mary's pastor is the assistant pastor. Amen. 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 
Good morning. My name is Brenda Patricia Venegas. Um, I had to write it down too because I'm a little bit nervous. I might forget something. <laughs> I started coming on Ms. Paisley's bus at the age of four years old. I can't remember the bus number. Sorry. But I sure remember the workers, the bus driver, and of course, Miss Pizza. She would always greet us. Ah. It was the best experience during my childhood. I love the coloring books, the verse that was in the coloring. My favorite song was Stop and Let Me Tell You. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I like the snacks. <laughs> As a child, <clears throat> I, also, I also enjoyed her classroom. I was there during her classroom class. I praise God for the for the bus ministry. Thank you for all of you that worked in that in that ministry. It was a great blessing. I was, I was um, saved at the age of nine years old. Yeah. Brother Juan Munoz led me to God yeah. when I was in class, in Sunday school class. Um, thank you for all the workers that are willing to serve God because of, like, of people like you and churches, many people have been saved. You may not see it, the fruit, but you will see it in heaven one day. Amen. Because of the people like you, we are here today. Amen. Because of people like Miss Paisley, many kids are serving the Lord today, and I am one of them. Thank you, Pastor Mike. Thank you. Amen. I would like to encourage you to keep serving the Lord on the best ministry. Bus ministry is a great need today. Many children <clears throat> need to come to church. Someone needs to bring them in to church. Please keep reaching, keep reaching the children and their families. They need you. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew 19:14, but Jesus said, "Suffer, little kids, little children." I think I got the wrong, I'm sorry. It says when, um, let the children come in, bring them in. God bless you. And thank you for having us today. Thank you. All right, we'll have the baby come now. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Paisley. Yes, I was, I used to be the baby. <laughs> now the baby's right here, my sister Elizabeth. She's the fourth one in our, in, our, in our family. I would like to read in Matthew 9, 35, please. Matthew 9, 35, it says, And Jesus went about all cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having to no shepherd. Then says this, he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Pete, he gave me five minutes to give a short testimony, but... The truth is that the Lord has done enough, and I don't think five minutes will be enough to tell you what, how the Lord has 
blessed us and what He's done in our lives. But I'll surely come this evening and have a, a testimony and I'll be, uh, have a video to teach, to show you. But what the Bible says right here, this is really the truth. The harvest, plenteous. Literally, the harvest is plenteous. When Jesus said to the harvest that, that the harvest was plenteous, it's because the harvest is plenteous. This is my church. This man right here is my pastor, Pastor uh, John Paisley. My Hispanic pastor is Pastor Aro. Brother Munoz, Brother Rafael Cerda, Mrs. Purgeon, they were my, uh, my teachers in Sunday school. Amen. And I was a child coming to the church. In 1981, I came to this church for the first time of my life. Riding in a white bus that sat on the side of the bus, the biggest little country church this side of the Mississippi. The truth is, when I was a little boy, I never understood why it said this. I always thought it should say the west side of the Columbia River. <laughs> we lived on Gore Street in a white house with my siblings, Mary, Brenda, and myself, David. I was only three years old. Mom, we lived with mom and dad. Every Sunday morning, a white bus brought us to church with this precious, caring lady, Mrs. Paisley. She would always pick us up. I still remember her voice with, with her love for the children. And the first time of my life, Someone spent their time to us. And the first time in my life, I memorized John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. For the first time, I learned songs like, Jesus loves me. Amen. Yes, I know. For the Bible tells me so. Amen. To wants me to keep me low, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Amen. For the first time in my life, we sang that song. I have the joy, joy down in my heart. Amen. Down in my heart. Amen. For the first time, someone gave time for us. Someone went to our house and picked us up, picked us up, and brought us to church. And today. I'm the assistant pastor of uh, in Mexico. My father is a senior pastor in Piedra Negra, Coahuila. And we're doing the same thing what we would, was taught here at church. We're trying to we're, uh, teach our people from church the importance of having a children's ministry, the importance of soul winning, the importance of knocking doors and showing the gospel house by house, the importance of street preaching like we did here. We uh, started a bus ministry. We've been praying so so much about this. I had this burn in my heart because I remember how I was brought to church and I want to do the same thing for the children to come to church and know about Christ. Amen. Amen. One, two years ago, I came into Patrick Paley's office and I knocked on the door. And I told him, Pastor, Please help us. I have a burden in my heart. And I want to reach children. I started crying like a baby. And I told Pastor, Pastor, pray for us. We need to start a bus ministry in Mexico. Our city is about 300 people in that city of Piedra Negras. And there's a couple churches, Baptist churches, but none of them have a bus ministry. Please help us pray. And he prayed for me. We went back to, I went back to Piedra Negras and I started, we, I kept on telling our church, our church people and trying to teach them the importance of it, having a bus ministry. Pastor Otto gave us a call one time and he said, I have a bus for you. I have a bus so you can bring people to church, children to church. I was so excited and, and uh, we went ahead and got this bus. This bus was in uh, Acuña, Mexico, about an hour away from Piedra Negras. We started bringing people to church. I started telling the, our, our teenagers, teenagers, we need some help. 
You have the, the, the energy. God could use you. Even though you're young. Even though you're a teenager, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18. God could use you. And God brought some youth, some teenagers to help in the bus ministry. Amen. We have a young couple. He's only 22. His wife is 20. They're a year, they just got married about a year ago. And I talked to him and he said, he said you know what, Brother David, I want to become the bus captain. Man. I said, that's what we need. We started making uh, with, the, with the teenagers and, and not just teenagers, but people 30, 40 years old, 40 years old, but mostly teenagers, youth. We started making Bible clubs at Pietro Negros. And we started seeing children getting saved and, yeah. and being excited and saying, you know what, we're about to end. And they were, oh, come on, one more hour, one more hour, please. We want to hear more about the children's songs. We want to hear more about, about the Bible. I'm yeah. sorry, we'll be back next week. But this Sunday, we'll come and pick you up on our white bus. Amen. You see the bus that we have here? It's a shuttle bus. A shuttle bus. You see the bus we got here? They said yes. And I would take it to a Bible club. We're gonna, just be here in the corner, and we're going to come and pick you up on Sunday morning. Yeah. Our surprise was that we would go in that corner, and people, kids, children with parents would be ready to go to church. Yeah. And for the first time, they went to church. For the per first time, they heard that Jesus loves them. And we were, 30, 40 kids went to church. We were so excited. We kept on praying. We kept on fasting. And God kept on opening doors. We went to a different neighborhood, different neighborhood. About three weeks ago, maybe four, we had 60 children getting on on shuttle bus. 60. We had a couple parents, a couple youth, young people, 60 children on the bus. The next Sunday, we went to a different neighborhood, and and then we were picking from neighbor. One, we had we were getting one neighborhood, another neighborhood, another neighborhood. We had seventy children on a shuttle bus. How we put seventy children on a shuttle bus? I don't know. I don't know. On the way back, we uh, needed some help, and the people from our church um, helped us to take a couple of them back. We still had fifty kids on the shuttle bus. The devil, our enemy. He's, he's not always very happy about this. We had a short circuit on the bus. Our bus burned in flames. I uh, remember what Pastor Paisley was, was saying just a moment ago. We already had a, we, this is the first time we had a, a bus driver, a new bus driver uh, that said volunteer to drive the bus because I was driving the bus. And I said, you know what? You drive the bus, bus captain, you be in charge of taking children to home safe to their house, like Pastor pa Pastor Mike uh, taught us to do here in Riverview. And and we had some helpers that would help with the songs and, and take the children to their house. I'm gonna go to the grocery store, I'm gonna buy some some uh, something to do in a barbecue. I'm gonna barbecue some food. When you guys get back from, from, from the bus route, I'll have, my wife and myself will have something ready for you. My father gives me a call and he says, David, you know what happened? I said, no dad, what happened, what's going on? They just called us about one minute ago. The, the bus is in flames. It's about three three blocks away from, away from church. I had, my wife and I, we already had a shopping cart full of food. We just left in there and we left out the grocery store and we went in our car and, and went to that same place where my father had said. The firemen had already put out the fires. I see children crying and they came up to me. And I remember how children come in, in my church here at Riverview and they would come and, and say hi, shake hands with Pastor Mike, and so, give him a hug. And children came up to me and, and said, crying. And I see the, the bus, the hood melted, and the glove compartment melted, and the wiring burned. And they came up to me when I, went, when I first got there, and they said, Brother David, I said, don't cry. Why are you crying? Everything's going to be just fine. This really touched my heart. We're not crying because we're afraid. We're crying because how are you, are this church gonna take us to church? Man. That's what hurts the most, the little girls and little boys were crying. How are we gonna get to church now? And I said, let's pray. God will give us another bus. There's nothing impossible for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And thank you very much for having us here. I have, we have a video tonight, we would like to show it to you. And pray for a Iglesia Bautista, Gesemani, and Piedra Negras, Puebla, Mexico. Uh, we're about 
uh, two minutes from the border borderline from Eagle Pass, Texas, and uh, pray for us. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Praying with us about getting them a new bus. I don't mean a brand new bus. 